Let's do Sunbelt East QB previews. It's Locked On Sunbelt. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome back to another edition of Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. I'm your host, Dave Schultz. Had some really good reaction to the Sunbelt West quarterback preview. So let's do the Sunbelt East quarterback previews. And, you know, I'm sitting here in Mobile, Alabama. So if people uh, in, you know, places like Lafayette or Troy or Hattiesburg or San Marcos knows more than me, pass it along. I'm happy to uh, respond. Uh, people think that there's going to be you know, more of a competition in Lafayette for the Raging Cajuns. All right. If Ben Wooldridge was healthy, he'd be the starting quarterback. All right. I think that Chandler Fields would probably be the starting quarterback. Uh, I could see him losing the job, but I think going into the season, based on experience, that's what I think it'll be. Of course, this could all change in like two months when the portal opens up. And that's a great, what we call in the business, a segue. Let's go over to the Sunbelt East quarterbacks. And a little bit different than uh, the West. The West really only has one incumbent that is your starting guy. There's no competition. Carter Bradley is it in South Alabama. Zach Wilkie, I hear, is banged up. We The Cajuns have maybe one. Gunnar Watson is the incumbent going in. And then you have Malik Hornsby, who will probably start for Texas State transfer. All right, but you have the open competitions, Arkansas State, ULM. In the East, it's a little bit different. You got the three-time Sunbelt Player of the Year, Grace McCall, back with the Chanticleers for now, okay? I haven't really heard anything since he went into the portal and then came back out. So let's say for the sake of argument, Grace McCall is sticking around Coastal Carolina. They would obviously be the favorites. I know you got a new coach in Tim Bell from NC State. Uh, a lot of the uh, talent that had been there uh, under uh, Jamie Chadwell is gone and playing with Grace McCall. But nonetheless, with Grace McCall at the helm, I would still think that they would be the favorites in the East. All right. And especially when you have Grace McCall. All right. he He's the guy, right? He is generally considered the best player in the Sun Belt for like the last three years. Carter Bradley may give him a run for his money this season, but certainly heading into the year, Grayson McCall is the only three-time Sun Belt player of the year in the history of the conference. So uh, outstanding for Grayson McCall, and that is a huge boost uh, to Tim Belk and his staff to have Grayson. Now, there were rumors that he is still trying to you know, get his degree, finish up, and will transfer after the spring. We'll see. Those rumors may or may not have started with lockdown Auburn, Zach Blackerby. And I like to persist rumors that either I start or other people start. But uh, he said that on my former radio show in Mobile. So we'll have to wait and see if Grayson McCall is going to leave Coastal Carolina. Again, for the sake of this, this uh, conversation, we're going to say he's going to stay put. Uh, but again, as I mentioned at the top, all of this could be for not once the transfer portal opens up. All right. Now you have Cam Thatcher at Marshall. Okay. And um, he came in uh, later on in the season. Starter got hurt. Young kid led him to a bowl game. Says right now, well, it says 2022 roster on the website. So he is going to be a redshirt sophomore this coming season, but certainly uh, did enough to win a bowl game. All right. Marshall plays that kind of stifling defense. They just need a couple of plays to get going. And that's exactly what they got in the bowl game to win that. And uh, Cam Fancher is the guy for Marshall. All right. And he, I mean, he could start it last year. He's going to be redshirt sophomore. I guess technically he could leave after that year, but I'm going to guess not. And then come back for his junior year and, you know, be, be a nice starting quarterback there for Marshall for two and a half seasons. And the herd would be in really good shape. 
All right, Charles Huff is going to play that really good defense. And again, if Marshall can put somewhere between, sometimes it's as little as 17, sometimes it's as, you know, as much as 24. But if they can play that defense and score some points, can't score like 10, but score some points, they're going to be in most football games. And so Cam Fancher is your guy for the Marshall Hurt, or for the Marshall Thundering Hurt, sorry. And for Georgia State, you have Aaron Granger. I'm sorry, Darren Granger. Uh, he is the quarterback. He's a redshirt uh, senior. Uh, they've already finished up uh, spring ball. Uh, and we're going to see if he can take his game to the next level. A lot of that is, you know, a lot like Carter Bradley, looking for a little bit more consistency all right um threw for over 200 yards a game last year it's outstanding completion percentage is under 60 percent you got to get that more towards 65 uh did throw for 16 touchdowns only six interceptions that's good but you'd like to see closer to you know 25 30 touchdowns uh he also runs the ball uh for 600 yards last year over 600 yards and six touchdowns so that's 22 touchdowns and six interceptions. Doesn't say fumbles here. Uh, and so if Darren Granger can take his game to the next level, uh, that's where it's going to start and end with Georgia State. Georgia State's going to go as much as Darren Granger is going to take. Him. All right. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. But that's where it is. In fact, all of these guys, right? Um, Grayson McCall. I'm not so sure Cam Fancher, right? Cam Fancher is going to be they want to see a little bit more than, say, uh, game manager out of them, right? Somewhere along the way, you're going to be, you know, in, either in a tie game or, you know, you're going to need a touchdown at the end of the game with two minutes left to go or a field goal, and you're going to have to lead us on a drive. But for the most part, Cam Patcher is going to be your game manager. Darren Granger and Grayson McCall are going to lead your team to victories, okay? If they have a bad game, it's going to be really tough to overcome that. That's how good and how much they mean to their teams. All right. All right. So when we come back, uh, let's talk about the open competitions, whereas there are only two open competitions in, in the West. There seems to be four open competitions in uh, the East. So when we come back, we'll look at the quarterback competitions in the Eastern Division, and there seems to be almost a handful. But first, let me tell you a little bit about FanDuel. The tournament is heating up, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything, from the money line to point scores and threes drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlor. So don't miss a chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, back with more. It is Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. We did the incumbents in the Sunbelt East. Let's check out a couple of the, if we can find it, a couple of the quarterback battles uh, that are going on. You got to replace, you know, Todd Centeno. You got uh, at uh, James Madison. You got to replace uh, App State's Chase Bryce, who's been playing college football uh, forever. Um, ODU has a quarterback battle. So it starts with Georgia Southern. Kyle Van Treese, uh the transfer, I think from Buffalo, right? Uh, he set all kinds of Georgia Southern records from not only season records, but apparently finished second all-time passing yardage uh, for Georgia Southern in one season. That's awesome. All right, so now what do you got? You got transfers, Davis Brin in his sixth year from Tulsa. You got J.C. French, transfer, redshirt freshman from Memphis. And you got Bo Allen, a redshirt junior from Tarleton State, Newcomers to the program, you do have uh, a few guys that have been there. I'm going to guess that Clay Helton is going to go with Davis Britt. He's got the experience. He is um, 
he's going to be the one that they're going to go with to begin with, I think. All right, we'll keep an eye on that one. But I also think it's wide open. If one of these other guys play better, then, you know, Davis Brin, six year or not, is going to be out of luck. But I would presume Davis Brin is going to be the quarterback for Georgia uh, Southern. Uh, but they have a big shoes to fill, right? Kyle Van Street set all kinds of records, did throw one too many interceptions. I know you take the good with the bad, but um, there were some bad numbers there, right? I mean, again, he set all kinds of records, right? I mean, let's see, 31, 42, almost 43. He threw for 4,253 yards, more than he had in his previous three years combined or very close to it, looking at the numbers, all right? He had 27 touchdowns. The 16 interceptions is a killer. That's more than one a game. That's just an absolute killer. We're talking about Darren Granger having 16 touchdowns and six interceptions. Well, you'd like to see 25 or 30 touchdowns, but you can't more than double the interceptions. That's not going to work, right? It used to be two to one, but now it's it's like three to one and sometimes four to one, right? NFL quarterbacks in, in 17 games, Sometimes you see guys that don't have 10 interceptions. So in 12 or 13, you can't have 16. So that's where I'm going to bet that Clay Helton is going to very much so stress no interceptions. He can't be turning the ball over. All right. So now you got, again, at Georgia Southern, you probably have Davis Brid. Uh, and we'll see if J.C. French gets a shot. Although he's a redshirt freshman out of Memphis, and then Tarleton State's, maybe division. Maybe, I guess, one double A. Uh, for App State, um, I, you have Ryan Berger, Brady McBride, and junior college transfer Joy Aguilar. Those are the guys that are splitting the snaps, at least in their first scrimmage. And again, I think this is wide open. Uh, they're going to replace Chase Bryce, who, boy, when he was on, he was on. And when he wasn't on, he wasn't on. He had a tough time making those adjustments when things were not going quite as good as he would have liked to. All right. Um, but App State, wide open over there for uh, the Mountaineers. All right. We will see how good uh, they are. Um, if they can once again contend, right? All of a sudden, it's not App State and Coastal. All of a sudden, James Madison's pretty good. All of a sudden, Marshall's pretty good. All right? All of a sudden, Georgia Southern was pretty good. App State seems to have maybe have taken a step back, um, right? They usually are known for those, you know, quarterbacks that seem to be there four or five years. I know in the day of the transfer portal, that's not going to work, but we'll see if they can get somebody to go there um, and be the quarterback for two or three years. All right. Uh, one of the bigger replacements. Uh, in fact, let's take a timeout. We'll come back and we'll do James Madison and ODU. Uh, James Madison has a huge, has huge shoes to fill. ODU has an interesting story. They got the incumbent quarterback, but they also have a transfer who's coming in with the new offensive coordinator. All right. So meanwhile, uh, again, Thank you so much. We've just had a, you know, a great week of Locked On Sunbelt. We have just about tripled the amount of subscribers that we've had in about a month. Again, if you look back, I don't know if you can, you know, I can. We had like 40 or 41 when we started the Sunbelt Conference Tournament. We did a little bit of football, but obviously we we're concentrating on basketball at that point in time. I know taking advantage of the Cajuns, playing the Volunteers, that went up. Um but we're almost we're over 120. Or we were 120 when I was recording this. Uh, a couple of more, we will have completely uh, tripled our subscribers. And of course, when you triple the subscribers, the videos get played more. They get more suggested, and really appreciate it. So thank you so much. Uh, we will continue to do football again. We will have a. Uh, we got to get into baseball. Been a little bit of a blind spot lately. I understand that, and I will get into softball maybe closer to when the softball uh, commerce tournament is. Uh, and we will have some news 
uh, next week, probably. All right, we'll make an announcement here um, on Lockdown Sunbelt. I want to, well, sorry, I got to lock down a couple of things. All right, is that a different podcast? But I got to make sure that uh, everything is copacetic uh, with the news. So we will have an announcement sometime next week. And But I do want to thank you for subscribing. It, it means a whole lot, uh, mostly that I'm kind of doing things right. And again, if I get something wrong, please let me know. I, I'm you know, I can only follow so much college football and so much college basketball and so much college baseball. And when uh, the teams are and the fans are more local and more knowledgeable, I'm glad to hear it. All right. And uh, it helps out a lot, too. So I appreciate everybody that's tuning in. Uh, please subscribe uh, in uh, YouTube. Uh, hit the little bell thing for the notifications for when a new one drops. Usually it's, you know, early in the morning. So, you know turn your phone off, I guess. So you don't wake up in, in the middle of the night, but uh, it'll be there for when you get up in the morning and uh, you can find the, the podcast, the audio version, wherever you get your podcast. We are all over the place. Just search Locked On Sunbelt. So again, thank you so much for helping us grow the station. Uh, looking forward to keeping on doing it. And, um, you know, we'll get through spring and then looking forward to uh, next season because I think next season could be as wild uh as there is, I think the, the East is wide open. Uh, the West is supposed to be won by South Alabama, but we'll see. But, you know, what are the Cajuns going to do? Troy's the defending champion. Uh, Southern Miss is up and coming. And I'm really excited. The most exciting team I'm looking forward to watching is Texas State because I think that's going to be a lot of fun. They're going to probably shock some people, although we'll see how many W's that they get. They will challenge teams that are not ready to put up 40 points in a game. All right. Uh, so, again, thank you so much uh, for uh, joining us for Locked On Sunday. All right, let's wrap it up with the last two uh, teams in the East that apparently also have wide open competitions. James Madison, who was ba- your Eastern Division champion, right? Whether, you know, technically or not, they won uh, the East, right? They couldn't play in the Sunbelt Championship game. We've been over that. It was a, you know, bunch of hogwash, but whatever. They hammered Coastal Carolina. Did Grayson McCall play in that game? I think he tried to play in that game, but it wasn't worth it. And, um, you know, they they sent a statement. Maybe maybe Grayson didn't play, but they made a statement in that ball game. And uh, James Madison was really good last year, but they got to replace Todd Centeno, who was an outstanding quarterback. All right. You do have Arizona's Jordan McLeod. You got Wake Forest's Brett Griffiths, Griffiths uh, from the portal. And uh, let's see who else you got. You got uh, Billy Atkins. And Alonza Barnett of the third. So, again, you got a four-way battle there. Tough to get everybody snaps. We'll see, you know, what they do coming out of a spring ball. All right. Then ODU, Old Dominion, you got quarterback Hayden Wolf, And that's been reported as a part-time, at least a part-time starter for Old Dominion since 2019. Has thrown for 5,500 yards, almost 5,600, and 30 touchdowns. The thing is, they went out and got Kevin Decker uh, from Fordham that led all of Division I, get this, by averaging 609 yards, almost 609 yards and almost 50 points per game. So you got Texas State in the West and you got ODU in the East. All right. And coming in with Kevin Decker is Fordham's backup quarterback, Grant Wilson. So you have the incumbent quarterback, Hayden Wolf, who knows about ODU, but you got Grant Wilson, the, the Fordham backup quarterback, who knows Kevin Decker's offense. It is going to be a lot of fun to see what happens there. All right. It was written um, six foot three, 203 pound junior Wilson played little at Fordham, which had an FCS All American, Tim uh, DeMorat. Um, as a senior at Yorktown High in Arlington, Virginia, Wilson completed 171 of 264 for 2,600 yards and 24 touchdowns. He was rated a three-star, 24-7 sports. Also in the running is Jack Shield, 6'1", 192-pound redshirt sophomore from Centraville, Virginia. He was also a three-star quarterback at Centerville High School. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see if the incumbent starting quarterback, or at least Part-time, as I mentioned, Hayden Wolf gets a shot, or does Kevin Decker know, or does Grant Wilson know the offense so well that he takes over? And again, boy, can you imagine ODU and Marshall going at it? You know, 
the huge offense and the great defense. It's, it, the Sun Belt's going to be a lot of fun next year, right? Or ODU and Coastal Carolina where, you know, the over-under is like 85 or 90. So it'll be a lot of fun uh, to watch. It's going to be a very exciting season. Uh, you do have the three incumbents, Grayson McCullough Coastal, Cam Thatcher at Marshall, uh, Darren Granger. Sorry about that, Darren. Darren Granger at Georgia State. And then you have wide open competitions, Georgia Southern, App State, James Madison, and ODU. It will be fascinating to see how these games, how these competitions play out. All right. Want to thank you very much again for tuning in uh, to Locked on Sunbelt. We will have another episode on a Friday. All right. To, to wrap it up. And um, thank you very much. Uh, once again, I am your host, Dave Schultz. And you've been watching, watching, you've been watching Locked on Sunbelt, your team every day.